Thousands of years before Europeans arrived in present-day South Carolina, our state was occupied by Indians, also called American Indians or Native Americans. At least 29 distinct groups of Indians lived within South Carolina. These groups were called tribes. Sadly, the Indian population in South Carolina and the United States greatly declined after the arrival of Europeans. Tribes were weakened by European diseases such as smallpox, for which they had no immunity. Epidemics killed vast numbers of Indians, reducing some southeastern tribes by as much as two-thirds. Populations declined even further due to conflicts with the settlers over trade practices and land. Many of the tribes that once lived in South Carolina are now extinct. This means that there are either no surviving members or that they no longer organize themselves as a tribe. A few tribes, however, still exist and are active today. This means that descendants of the original tribe have organized themselves socially and politically as a tribe since historical times. The Wasamasaw tribe is one of these groups, still active and present in South Carolina today. The Wasamasaw tribe is a Native American community, which is located near present-day Kynes Crossroads between the major towns of Somerville, Monk's Corner, and Goose Creek. The Wasamasaw tribe of Varner Town Indians are descendants from the original Etowan, Catawba, Cherokee, Edisto, and other settlement Indians, and is located approximately 30 miles northwest of Charleston. The Varner Town Indian community was formed from two distinct groups who settled together for protection and preservation. One of these groups was a settlement tribe that formed along the Cherokee trading path. The other was the Etowan tribe, whose grounded land and moved into the Wasamasaw Swamp after the Yamasee War. The original Etowan people, later known as Etowan, once inhabited what is now known as Daniel Island. Later, after conflicts around 1724, the Etowan were granted land in the Wasamasaw Swamp. But how did this occur? In 1715, a war broke out between the Yamasee with a handful of other natives and the colonial English government in South Carolina. Initially, during the beginning of the war, the Etowan sided with the English of South Carolina. But due to anti-Indian sentiments among the colonists during the first half of the war, the colonial relationship with the Etowan shattered. Due to these frayed relationships, later that year the Etowan switched sides and joined the Yamasee as they fought against the South Carolinians. Because of the multitude of tribes who were involved in the war, and the large area where fighting took place, there was no definitive end to the conflict. Much of the large battles were over in the first few months. Peace treaties were established such as the Cherokee Alliance of early 1716, and the various peace treaties with various Creek and other Muscogean peoples in 1717. After the war, much of the Etowan were scattered in small groups in St. James Ghost Creek Parish and St. John's Berkeley Parish. In 1724, an Etowan representative went to the Commons House of Assembly to request a single settlement area to bring the tribal members together and provide a means of support for their dwindling numbers. At the time, there were believed to be less than 200 Etowan people. These records can still be found in the Journal of the Commons House of Assembly. The Commons House of Assembly granted the request and issued land on the western side of the Wasamasso Swamp. After gaining land in the Wasamasso Swamp, their dwindling numbers and lack of response from the South Carolina government to help defend them from other invading tribes and slave raiding parties. The few remaining Etowan left the swamp seeking refuge with nearby tribal communities. Historian and former Ghost Creek mayor, Michael Heatzler, writes in his book, Wasamass All and Beyond, about the Varner Town Indians' Etowan roots. In his book he states, A phenotype of generic settlement Indians characterized the natives of Wasamassa and the land beyond, where they served as sentries against an increasingly dangerous frontier. Those settlement Indians, some wandering the middle ground and some settled west of Wasamassa, are likely the tribe indicated on a Catawba deerskin map. That map indicates a Wafmasa tribe west of Charleston. The Wafmasa identity is likely referring to the obscure settlement Indians Etowan that relocated beyond the Wasamasa swamp. This is what leads us into the settlement tribe along the Cherokee Path. The Cherokee Path, also Kiwi Path, was the primary route from Charleston to Columbia connecting all of the Cherokee territories. The path ran 130 miles from Charleston to the colonial settlement of 96. He then traveled to Fort Prince George in the Cherokee village of Kiwi, the principal town of the Cherokee lower settlements in present-day Oconee, Greenville, Pickens, and Anderson counties. From Kiwi, the path branched out into the Unica Mountains. 
following streams and valleys to Clayton, Georgia, up to Franklin and Murphy in North Carolina, the middle settlements and across to the Cherokee towns in Tennessee, the overhill settlements. These many intersecting trading paths contributed to form small settlements of Native Americans. Natives from many different tribes settled to make a small town between larger settlements on the path. One such settlement was what would later be called the Varner Town Indian Community. Natives came from many different tribes including Catawba, Cherokee, Edisto, Santee, Etowan, and other settlement Indians. This community was a thriving farming community of assimilated Native Americans in St. James Goose Creek Parish on the Cherokee Path. Carnes Crossroads is the intersection of Old State Road Highway 176 and Alternate 17. Carnes Crossroads was named after Dallas Carn, plantation owner and local magistrate in the early 1900s. The historical Cherokee path to Charleston ran across Goose Creek near Monk's Corner and through the Varner Town Indian community. Various other native paths and trails joined this path in what is now Berkeley County. This tribal community has eight documented native lineal bloodlines, and these family lines are represented in many ways. For example, the tribal seal contains eight ears of Indian corn. Eight eagle feathers and eight beads to represent the eight ancestral bloodlines. The Clark bloodline. William Clark is documented within the community in 1773. On March 3, 1807, John Gough swore an affidavit that William Clark and his two siblings descended from a Native American woman of the Catawba Nation and was born in the St. James Goose Creek Parish. His son was Joseph Clark, born 1779. The Clark documented bloodline starts with this progenitor and ties to a Catawba family within the settlement community. The Williams bloodline. The progenitor of the Williams line is Hannah William born mid 1700s. She and her sister Bathsheba were of Native American Edwin descent. Hannah Williams was the grandmother of William Williams. William fathered Mary Williams who married William Varner. The Driggers bloodline. There are several documented sources showing Elizabeth Statue Driggers, wife of Moses Driggers, a free Indian of Cherokee Native American ancestry. She helped to establish one of the Indian schools in the community, the St. Barnabas Mission in 1883. The Dangerfield Bloodline William Elliot Eddings had a daughter with Indian Mary, an Edisto Indian. That daughter, Hannah Eddings, born late 1700s, death 1857. She married John R. Dangerfield, the son of William Dangerfield, who came to South Carolina in the American Revolutionary War. Their four sons were John Morton, William, and James. In 1854, the four sons refused to pay capitation taxes. The Court of Common Pleas found them not liable to the capitation tax since they were descendants of free Indians. The Broad Bloodline George Broad was a German immigrant who settled in the area in the late 1700s and owned a plantation next to Bambretta, which was a plantation owned by John Dangerfield C. Dangerfield Native Line. George fell in love with an Indian slave named Daphne and had several children with her, Nicholas, Mary, Jacob, Betsy, Sammy, William, Sarah, Frederick, James, George, and Simeon. In his will, George knew he could not legally leave his land to Daphne and his children, so he entrusted his neighbor, John Dangerfield, to look after his estate and take care of his family. John Dangerfield kept to his promise, but after his death, his children pushed to ship off his family to take the land. The Burbage Bloodline John Burbage, born 1780-1850, was the son of Thomas Burbage and Elizabeth Platt, a Santee Indian. John had a son named Thomas Burbage who married Marianne Broad, C. Broad native line. The Varner Bloodline Rose Varner, born 1822, death 1900, is the progenitor of the Varner line. She was the only documented native slave on the Varner plantation. She had several children, Jane, David, Margaret, William, Hannah, Eliza, Lavinia, and Marion. William Varner, born 1847, death 1927, and Marion Varner are well documented in the settlement community. Rose lived with Marion in the community until her death. William married Mary Williams of the Williams native line, and their nine children and numerous grandchildren make up many of the families living in the community today. The Huff Bloodline 
William Huff born 1823 died 1855. James Huff and Daniel Huff were the first Huffs of documented Indian descent. They were the sons of John Huff and Elizabeth Burbage. The Huffs married into both the Burbage and Riggers lines, and then later married into the Varner and Clark lines. Although our Setlama tribe is made up of several different native progenitors, and our core community in place since the 1700s, our distinction as a native community has remained in place even today as we continue to marry in and forge kinship ties with other tribes, especially our sister tribes of the area. Edisto and Santee, many of our family have ties to several different tribes and native ancestry. The name Wasamasa was officially adopted by the tribe and the community formally organized as a non-profit with the state. The name combined the historical relevance to the Wasamasa Swamp and the Varner Town Settlement Community. Our name recognizes our Etuan ancestors who once resided there between the 1700s and 1800. Our Etuan ancestors moved from the reservation in the Wasamasa Swamp and settled in the nearby Varner Town Settlement Community, now known as the Wasamasa Tribe of Varner Town Indians. The core members of our tribe still live today.